Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about American politics. We're going to talk about Kamala Harris, uh, what seems to be a, an absolutely doomed, fraught campaign uh, to win the U.S. presidential election, um, and her pick as uh, vice president. So her pick as vice president is Tim Waltz. Who on earth is Tim Waltz? So he is the governor of Minnesota, and um, he has accomplished one significant thing in his life, in my humble opinion, and that is he was in the U.S. military. Thank you for your service. That is an incredible accomplishment. Um, and, you know, he served with honor, and, and that, that cannot be ignored. That's significant, right? But as a political, uh, as a political support structure for an ongoing U.S. presidential candidacy, Tim Waltz is an absolutely abominable choice. Just, just terrible. So what do we, what do we learn from, oh, before we go a step further, uh, I have to um, accept my you were wrong uh, accolades. Uh, I was horribly wrong. I'm on record right here on this channel predicting that Josh Shapiro would be the vice president pick for Kamala Harris. Uh, why was I wrong? Because I did not understand the situation. I keep forgetting. Kamala Harris' uh, campaign, in my humble opinion, is not actually a real campaign. It's a silent surrender. Uh, I think, you know, like, uh, there's a lot of problems with Biden to the point where I think the story changed from, hey, I don't think you're going to be a good, you know, I don't think an 80-year-old president can be president, right? Like, you can't do four more years. You can't understand sentences and then respond to those sentences with coherent other sentences, right? You, you, you fail at basic communication. The idea that you could do the job of U.S. president is now a laughable joke, but what's a terrifying um, a terrifying thought is who was actually running America for the last four years? Because people were saying that you were too old to do the job in 2020, right? And so this, and so the Democrats have a huge problem in that it really looks like we didn't have the president we thought we had. When you use the words deep state, that's, that's about as deep state as it gets, right? That, you know, that's, you know, that's Manchurian candidate talk. Like, we know that we, basically there's an open discussion now that not only was he not fit to be president in 2024, he, re he really hasn't been president since uh, he's never been president. Joe Bush Biden has never been president, right? Like, but there was something else or someone else running the country. And everybody's like, oh, this is terrifying, right? So, um, so then, so basically Biden had cocked it up. The whole country's on flame, in flames. We're in dollars on the, we're in the war, we're in two, two global wars, dollars on the ground, not boots on the ground yet. There's open discussion that we're in the start of World War III. There's open discussion that we're heading quickly to a second civil war, right? Like inflation is through the roof. You can't buy milk. Nobody could buy houses. We buy cars the way we used to buy it. It's, it's done, right? Like, it's just like, it's gotten to the point where even the Democrats cannot pretend that this is a viable solution, right? Then, there was a failed assassination attempt on President Donald Trump, and that just even solidified his strength and his position even more, right? So there, I think the Democrats are like, this, this is over, right? Let, let's not let's not take another one on the chin. Set, you know, give Kamala Harris the war chest. Let's go through the motions and pretend, and, and let's go through the motions and actually supply a candidate. But even the Democrats at this point, I don't think they have any... I don't think there's a sing single Democrat who believes for one second that, that that they are actually able to win this election. This election is already over, but we have to go through the motions, right? Like, this is a basketball game uh, where the Globetrotters are playing against the generals, right? Like, and, and, the, and the Republicans are the, are the Globetrotters and the generals are the Democrats. This is just, this is just all a puppet show. It's all a puppet show, right? Like, you, you know, you could see the hand, right? So... Um, Tim Waltz is perfect for that. He is completely forgettable as a politician. He's not forgettable as a human being. He did serve in the military. Um, but he is, as a political, you know, as a political support structure, he brings literally nothing to the table. Uh, actually, there's one more thing he does bring to the table. He's 60 years old. So if he were to become president, there's a, you know, he's below retirement age. That's something. That's the Democrats giving us something, right? Why was Tim Waltz picked? Uh, here's, here's my humble opinion on that. Uh, Ben Shapiro, uh, sorry, Josh Shapiro was the right pick. Okay. But Kamala's people are like, we have to fix this Palestine problem and they are not wrong. Right. 
Uh, first of all, they're going to have to beg people to to uh, you know to vote for four more years of this chaos that the Democrats have already delivered. And there's a there's every expectation that Kamala Harris will deliver exactly what Biden delivered because she's been doing it for four years. She helped build this chaos, this this wastescape we're living in right now, right? And everybody knows it. But the one thing she could do uh, is the Democrats are le- the majority of Democrats are legitimately furious for President Biden being a strong Israel ally. And so that's the one thing that Kamala can do to uh, to differentiate herself and say, oh, no, I don't support Israel and I support Palestine, right? And uh, if she had chosen Josh Shapiro, that he's a strong Israel ally, right? And, um, and you know, uh, and logically people would be, it wouldn't be foolish to say he's, you know, not a strong Palestine ally. If you're a strong Israel ally, there's a good chance you're not a strong Palestine ally because their their desires are opposed, right? So this this Tim Waltz is not about Tim Waltz. He's just a placeholder. He's part of the silent surrender of the Kamala Harris campaign, in my humble opinion. He's a perfect person to pick to 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 gain zero points in the general and make sure that the loss that you already knew was going to happen absolutely happens, right? And then you know, and uh, and just like. The knockout already occurred from the Republicans to the Democrats. And so this is just, it, we're just running through the motions on this election. This this thing is done. It's cooked. The Dems are cooked, right? And Tim Waltz is a absolutely zero benefit pick, right? Uh, he, does, he does have that benefit of, I'm not Josh Shapiro. Just like Kamala has that Democrat benefit, I'm not Trump. That's not enough to win. You can't win on, I'm not this person. You have to be somebody that actually people are excited about. And at the macro level, I no one's excited about Kamala Harris. And I can tell you right now, not only was no one excited about Tim Waltz, nobody knew who Tim Waltz was. I had to look him up. I looked him up this morning. I'd never heard his name before. So, you know, that's that's astounding. He wasn't, I, I don't think he was even on the short list, right? Like, I or if he was, I, I couldn't hear his name because he was so insignificant, right? Like, a governor from Minnesota, right? Like, come on. Uh, so, so that's my humble pick on why my, my humble opinion, every single word you just heard is my humble opinion on why Kamala chose Tim Waltz and that Tim Waltz will do zero to help win this election for Kamala Harris. Um, and then, um, I think what's really important is, uh, yeah, what's really important is when I get to hear your humble opinion, when you get in the comments and send your traffic, please consider like subscribing and have a fetch millennium.